Okay, so in this video, what we're going to do is find the area contained between the curves r equals 1 plus cosine theta and r equals root 3 sine theta. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is really draw a diagram so we can visualise what's going on. Now, what we should be identifying is that r equals 1 plus cosine theta is a cardioid and r equals root 3 sine theta is a circle. OK, so let's draw a diagram first. So our cardioid, r equals 1 plus cosine theta, will look something like this. OK, now it would probably be best to identify where that point is there. So that's going to be when uh, theta is pi over 2. OK, so 1 plus cosine of pi over 2 gets us 1. And so that is 1. OK, now what does this look like? Root 3 sine theta. Well, when theta is 0, sine of 0 is 0. And so we're starting here. And um, as theta increases, so if we do draw a quick little sketch of theta and r, it's going to look like this. And it's going between minus root 3 and positive root 3. There's pi. There's 2 pi, OK? So between 0 and pi, um, at pi over 2, we get up to root 3. So that means root 3 is somewhere up here, because it's above 1. And because it's a circle, it's going to be looking like this. Okay, something like that. So as it comes back round to pi, it's going to zero again, and then it's repeating itself. Okay, when r is negative. So this is what we're looking at. Okay, and we're interested in the area between these two curves. So it is this area in here. So what I'm going to need to do is work out that point there where the two curves intersect. OK, so let's do that. So 1 plus cosine theta is going to be equal to root 3 sine theta. OK, so... That means 1, well, let's write it this way around. Um, I'll write it this way around. Root 3 sine theta take away cosine theta is equal to 1. Now, if this had been equal to 0, this would have been easy to do. Uh, I could have just used um, divided through by cosine theta and solve a tan equation. But unfortunately, I can't. So... How am I going to solve this equation? Well, the way to do it would be to use an equivalent form. So what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite the left-hand side in the form of r sine. And because we've got this minus, we're going to have to have theta minus alpha. OK, so using the compound angle formula, that is sine theta cosine alpha take away cosine theta sine alpha. So r cosine alpha sine theta take away r sine alpha cosine theta. So we need the r cosine alpha to be root 3. And the r sine alpha to be 1. OK, so let's draw ourselves a right angle triangle. Here's R. Uh, cosine alpha, so root 3 is the adjacent. 
Here's our alpha. And 1 is the opposite. So that means that r is going to be equal to the square root of this squared plus this squared. So 3 plus 1 is 4. Square root of that is 2. And alpha is going to be equal to the inverse tan of 1 over root 3. which is pi over 6. OK. So we can now say that 2 sine theta take away pi over 6 is going to be equal to 1. OK, so I've made that conversion. So now I need to solve this equation. So sine of theta take away pi over 6 is going to be equal to 1 half. So inverse sine of 1 half is pi over 6. So um, theta take away pi over 6 is equal to pi over 6. Or theta, um, so... I need to subtract that, so thinking about my sine curve, and a half, we've just worked out that's pi over 6, so pi take away pi over 6, that's 5 pi over 6, so theta take away pi over 6 is equal to 5 pi over 6, so theta equals pi over 6 plus pi over 6, which is pi over 3, or theta is equal to 5 pi over 6 plus pi over 6, which is pi. And of course, this is the point when theta is pi. Not interested in that one. I'm interested in this one up here, which is pi over 3. OK. Um, so... What I can do is then I can say, okay, well, that's pi over 3, and I can substitute pi over 3 back in to one of these. I can work out the value of r if I wanted to. So 1 plus cosine of pi over 3 is equal to 3 halves. Well, 3 halves is the other way around, isn't it? 3 halves, sorry, pi over 3. So that's my point, okay, our polar coordinate of intersection. OK, so we've now got that. So how can I now work out the required area? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work out the area of the circle between 0 and pi over 3 which is going to give me that area there. So I'm going to have uh, 1 half. So let's call that A1. So this is going to be A1. A1 is going to be equal to the... is going to be equal to 1 half, sorry, times by the integral between 0 and pi over 3 of R squared which is that squared, so 3 sine squared theta d theta. Now, in order to integrate sine squared, I'm going to have to use my double angle formula. So cosine 2 theta is 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. Rearrange that to get sine squared. So sine squared is going to be equal to 1 half take away 1 half cosine 2 theta. OK. So this is going to be equal to 1 half times by the integral between 0 and pi over 3. Or 3 lots of that. So 3 halves take away 3 halves cosine 2 theta. D theta. Now, I could make this easier for myself. I could factor out the 3 halves if I wanted to. So 3 quarters integrated between 0 and pi over 3 of 1 take away cosine 2 theta d theta. So 3 quarters of theta 
take away, now the integral of this will be 1 half sine 2 theta, evaluated between 0 and pi over 3. So let's substitute in. Now I'm going to get pi over 3, take away, then I've got 1 half, oh, whoops, 1 half times by sine of 2 pi over 3. And that gets me root 3 over 4. So take away root 3 over 4. Substitute in the zero, I'm going to get 0 and 0. So multiply that through. Uh, I've got pi over 4, take away 3 root 3 over 16. So that is the first area, A1. OK. Now I'm going to need the second part. So this bit here, and that's going to be area 2. Now the area 2 is going to be equal to 1 half times by the integral between, so pi over 3 round to pi of 1 plus cosine theta squared d theta. Okay, so I'm going to need to expand this out. So 1 half times by the integral between pi over 3 and pi of 1 plus 2 cosine theta plus cosine squared theta d theta. So now I need my other double angle formula. So cosine 2 theta is 2 cosine squared minus 1. So cosine squared theta is going to be equal to uh, 1 half cosine 2 theta plus 1 half. So we get 1 half times by the integral between pi over 3 and pi. We've got the 1 half cosine 2 theta. We've got the 2 cosine theta. And we've got a plus half and a 1, so plus 3 halves, d theta. So let's go straight in with integrating that. Um, OK, so 1 half cosine 2 theta is going to integrate to 1 quarter sine 2 theta. Then we're going to have 2 sine theta. Then plus 3 halves theta evaluated between pi over 3 and pi. OK, so we're going to substitute in the pi now. So sine 2 pi is 0 and sine of pi is 0 and 3 halves pi, 3 pi over 2. Right, now substituting the pi over 3, uh, we've got 1 quarter times sine of 2 times pi over 3. That's root 3 over 8. Then we've got 2 times sine of pi over 3, which is root 3. And then 3 halves, so 3 halves times by pi over 3, so pi over 2. Not quite sure why I needed my calculator for that. There you are. And then let's simplify this. So we've got 1 half of, now we've got 3 pi over 2. take away pi over 2. So that's going to get us pi. We've got take away root 3 over 8 plus root 3. So take away 9 root 3 over 8. So pi over 2 take away 9 root 3 over 16. So that's area 2, that's area 1. So the required area is that one plus that one. So we've got pi over 4 plus pi over 2, 
which is 3 pi over 4. And we've got, uh, so minus 3 over 16, take away 9 over 16, which is minus 3 quarters. So take away 3 root 3 over 4. And so that is the required area.